Some people call it a feeling, a gut feeling, an inner knowing, maybe a sixth sense. Researchers have found that intuition does exist and it can be measured. Most of them agree that intuition mainly operates in the subconscious of the brain without control or awareness, but there are ways to improve it and use it to make faster and more accurate decisions. Nine News health and wellness expert Heather Hans joins us now to talk a little bit about intuition. Good morning. Good morning, Gary. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. So what does intuition really do for us? Yes, it, it does so much for us. First of all, it helps us make decisions and it also helps us learn and create and heal. There's a lot of research lately showing how much intuition helps us in our social lives as far as dealing with different people and navigating awkward situations. Um, scientists like Einstein have used intuition for their discoveries. CEOs who scored high in intuition were shown to be more profitable. And also women who practice intuitive eating based on their hunger rather than emotions or restrictions were shown to be able to keep their um, maintain their weight and be healthier overall than ones who based it on external validation. Yeah, I guess that all makes a lot of sense. It's something we don't often think about. Uh, what are the different ways people can experience intuition? Yeah, there are several different ways. One of them is called implicit knowledge or implicit learning. And this happens when you didn't realize that you learned something or um, you can't explain how you know it, like riding a bike. Uh, another example would be learning something incidental on a job and later it shows up as intuition because your brain associates those past patterns with current cues. And this happens fast and spontaneously, unlike when we're trying to solve a problem consciously. Another type is called intuitive insight. And this happens slower than implicit knowledge. It happens after we've been trying to solve a problem for a while. And then there's an incubation period where our brain might be working subconsciously on the problem. And then it shows up, the, the solution shows up as an insight because the brain pulls from our long-term memory. And this insight can happen at an unexpected time like like in the shower or working out or uh, as you're driving your car. Um, and then there's a, a third type of intuition called non-local intuition. This is the most controversial type, but also the type that people think of most often when they're thinking of intuition. And it's thought to come from the fact that everything in the universe, uh, physically and biologically, has an interconnectedness with each other. So examples would be a mother knowing that her child is in need from afar, or uh, an entrepreneur capitalizing on a, a change in the market that they shift that they they sense is coming down the road so lots of ways that people can experience it and there there is a rhyme and reason to it i i would guess so my my market intuition hasn't been very good lately i'll just i'll just tell you that <laughs> <laughs> heather on right. as, heather as always thanks we appreciate it thank you so much okay